Abia government has formally announced two confirmed cases of COVID-19 also in the state. The Commissioner for Information, Okiye Kalu, announced this on Monday in a statement made available to newsmen. According to Kalu, the two patients whose names were not disclosed hail from Ukwa and Umahia, North Local Government Area of the state. Both patients are advanced in age but currently stable at an isolation center in the state. He said that the government had deployed ventilators to the isolation centers in readiness for their use if eventually required to nurse them back to good health. The commissioner also added that contact tracing has commenced in Ennis and that the state rapid response team is already on the move to bring in those who may have had contact with the index, the two index cases. He advised residents not to panic but continue to observe all the guidelines issued by NCDC and the state interministerial committee on COVID-19. And on that matter, joining us via Skype is journalist Bara Temple from Abia State. He joins us for an impression of the mood of the people uh, to the news of COVID-19 in Abia State. Good morning, uh, Bara. A very good morning to you. Now, your state has witnessed two cases. What is the mood of the people hearing this news? <laughs> Well, um, there's been this mixed uh, feeling, first and foremost, some persons are uh, feeling some sort of panic as regards the fact that um, we're having this, the very first case confirmed in Abia, and considering the death toll, um, the geometric, increasing geometric numbers that's experienced in some other states, there's some sort of panic. On the other hand, I think ignorance is also an issue uh, main experience in the state that some people feel, okay, it's not uh, uh, an ailment that a common man will suffer. In quotes, if I had to use the evil balance, I worry and the big man. And on that note, you, you, if you're on the sidelines, if you have a, a full knowledge of what's going on in the world as regards to this pandemic, you, you'll be perplexed. If someone walks up to you and tells you, why are you covering your face? This guy, are we not God's child and all that kind of stuff. So, a mixed feeling here and there, but majority of the people uh, seem to have taken caution. Some persons have stayed indoors, but somehow, if you come out early in the morning, you notice that a bit of buying and selling is happening in some markets. Uh, commercial drivers and tricycle operators uh, run between the hours of five and six, and after what you see, the road uh, goes back to you know the isolation mode in court. But in all of it, you realize that a commercial town like Omaha, which is the capital of Abia State, is relatively um, less busy uh, than you know the normal days. All right, uh, Bara, could we request you to turn down a bit your volume of the television uh, because we are having cross echoes? And as you do that, um, how would you assess government's efforts? at enforcing compliance to the lockdown order, if you can hear me now. You would need to turn down uh, your volume, your television set is on. Yes, I'm going to do that right away. Okay. Okay, so yesterday All right, we had so a conversation with the Yes, Commissioner ahead. for Homeland Security, talking about Dan Ukoli, and he said um, as much as 75% work done uh, as regards enforcing border closure. Uh, that's coming from the Commissioner of Homeland Security. Of course, you know that's a, a newly created uh, ministry by the state government led by Governor Okezi Pazu. So the Commissioner uh, gave that statistics to say 75% work has been done in closing the borders and you know that um, Abbey State is bordered by Imo, Akwaibom, um, River State and so there's a lot of entry points into the state of Abia. Mm -hmm. The commissioner and of course the ministry does have his work contract for it in ensuring border closure uh, considering the fact that there are traditional parts into the state which are not the usual trunk A roads or trunk B roads. Some villages have, you know, common boundaries and just uh, probably uh, our farmland separating villages from different side on different states. So it's actually very difficult to enforce that. But with a committee set up on border patrol, 
I realized that some motorcycle riders had that vest on and were probably assigned to uh, go to the traditional parts to enforce, you know, the, the, the border closure. Because sometimes commercial drivers tend to take those traditional routes to get into the state in a bit to avert or avoid uh, the military men who are stationed at some point or, or the policemen or the NSCDC officials. Bara, you would agree with me that the lockdown would imply, you know, closing of businesses, you know, in some cases schools, normal life, so to speak. Now, what is one reoccurring concern the people are expressing, you know, since this uh, lockdown? Um, some persons, the slang on the street now is, you know, hunger virus kills more than coronavirus. Some people believe that uh, the method of distribution of palliative wasn't very satisfactory. On the other hand, uh, government in a bid to uh, distribute this relief materials void of political inclination or religious um, um, belongings and all, decided to use the churches, the mosques, the Christian Association of Nigeria, and then the traditional rulers who they feel are closest to the vulnerable and those who will need this palliative. Okay, um, it's on record that uh, ministries, departments, and agencies received their salary for the month of uh, March, uh, sometime towards the last week of March, days before the lockdown. And as such, I think government shifted its attention to people who more or less are vulnerable, indigents of the society, and they decided to go through the church, providing food materials and cash. But some concerns are that uh, the church have not been very, very, as a case that I've been following of Methodist church, that uh, a, a member of the church, Methodist church, received um, some cups of rice and was asking about the cash, you know, which should have gotten to him as well. So these are some of the issues that have, you know, cropped up in the distribution of these palliatives. Are you hopeful that you're going to see anything different from what you're already seeing in the coming days? I fear that it might get worse because uh, prior to this time, we've had um, we've had um, some we've been able to break through it more, more like um, we've not had the first case recorded, but here we are with two cases on our hand, and sometimes uh, somehow people are you know, um, not very certain that government is prepared to handle this. But with the reassurance coming from the Commissioner for Information, the ventilators have been deployed and contact tracing have begun. We're hopeful that, you know, people who have had contact with this um, um, patient can come forward and probably isolate themselves. But now, the question is, will the identity of these people be made public so that, you know, the um, larger society who probably have, would have come in contact with them, would actually go into self-isolation. There's also the issue of hospital transmission and community transmission. Some of the doctors who probably, and health workers who would have, you know, um, attended to these patients, you know, um, would also need to go into isolation. So uh, there's a whole lot to it, many sides to this coin. And now that you're talking also about the health workers and health facility, are you confident enough that what you have will be able to sustain uh, the situation at hand in terms of health facility? Okay, so the state government had reassured Abians that um, the Federal Medical Center, um, the Specialist Hospital in Amachara, and of course, um, an isolation center, you know, Abba, that was built specifically, would I say renovated specifically for this purpose, will be made available. And um, the fact that, you know, ABA is the hub of manufacturing in, you know, Nigeria, so to say, um, we're hopeful that we would have the PPE, the personal protective equipment, the face mask and all that, you know, the health workers will need. But now we need to also increase our testing ability because if we are unable to test, you may not even know the number of people who are infected. And, you know, it took a few days for this and Prosper, you know, the guy who was on the run, you know, in, in quote, for his result to come out and it, test, it turned negative. So if we have these lapses in the number of days that uh, the testing will happen, it's going to be a problem definitely. So I'm just hoping, you know, that we can increase our testing ability and possibly 
have a smart face mask and personal protective equipment made available to the health workers to motivate them to care for these patients just in case, you know, we have a spiral, uh, an increase in the number of persons who turn positive. So very much, Bara Temple, for your thoughts there. And please do stay safe. Yeah, you too. Thank you very much.